Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Our project today is trying to get our garden spot prepared for planting. The things you're going to see us doing is uh, ripping the soil and trying to cultivate it. We're going to be going through and picking out a lot of rocks and roots and just junk because this place has been occupied you know since the 1800s so there is just random stuff everywhere and the previous video where we were starting to tear down the old house place is where we're going to put our greenhouse so we want it in close proximity to the garden first thing we're doing here is I'm taking an old cultivator and just ripping the soil. You're going to see me going uh, across the hill or on contour and then you're going to see me going up and down the hill. This garden spot is on a slight slope and what we're trying to do is just break up the roots and pick, you know, knock any rocks loose and, and uh, roll up any junk that's in the soil so we can pick that up and get it out. Um, it's very clay. You'll see behind the plow here rolling up quite a bit of clay and then all of the other random junk. Now the equipment that we're using is stuff that had been left on the farm. Uh, you know, we found it sitting around in various places and so it's not in the best condition. We're just using it to see if it's gonna work, see if it's worth repairing. Um, this disc that I'm using right here is one that we drug out of the woods and uh, brought back and it was functional enough that we could use it to break up the larger clods of dirt, hopefully cut up some of the roots and, and get that out of there. To be more effective, it needs to have uh, some weight added to it. Now, like I said, I'm going up and down the hill, and then you're going to see me going across on contour. Uh, it seems like it's a lot of redundant work, but since this was forest previously, um, you know, it's going to take a lot to make it into workable soil. Here I've stopped because I saw something sticking out of the ground that we need to pick up. And what it turned out to be is part of a guy wire attachment off of a power pole that was buried in the dirt there. Uh, you know, we've rolled up car parts and old appliances and, you know, fence posts, tin just anything that you could associate with human habitation every time we start working the dirt on this place we find stuff i've been walking in the woods you know 40 acres into the property and found a pile of concrete blocks and you know there was another place where there was a big pile of old bicycles we've got a ravine that's full of what appears to have been at some point uh, equipment from a commercial laundry. I mean, it's just crazy how much stuff there is scattered all over this place. Now, as I start pulling this disc, you'll see that there's uh, one set of uh, discs that are not really turning and if you look there's one that's broken and it keeps getting hung up on the scraper as we go across here. Uh, this equipment probably 
are 60, 70 years old. And so it hadn't been maintained. Like I said, we drug it out of the woods and we're having to try to figure out what it's gonna to take to fix it or if we just need to scrap it and start over. I think this one's gonna be salvageable. Uh, it seems like the bearings and, or the bearing carriers and, and that kind of stuff are actually still usable, but it just needs to be serviced. Now here I'm coming in with uh, my brother-in-law's tractor. Uh, he bought a really nice little Coyote uh, hydrostatic drive tractor. At this point, my tractor uh, had developed a fuel leak, uh, which I'll have a video coming out on repairing that uh, here in a little bit. Um, but we needed to, uh, since the weather was good and this spot had dried out after some of the torrential rains, go ahead and get the tiller so we could continue working the soil and cleaning up. And here on my left, your right as you're looking at the screen, you'll see the rows of potatoes that I did the short on where the, we covered them up with old hay trying to keep them from freezing. And it was successful. They didn't freeze. We started getting potatoes coming up uh, not too long after this video was shot. Now you'll see this tiller jumping around quite a bit as I'm hitting rocks and stuff going across here. This tiller does a pretty good job uh, of making the soil workable. I have been actually kind of impressed with uh, with how good a condition it leaves the soil after you make a pass with it. Alright, so what we're doing here, uh, now that it looks like the threat of hard freeze is over with, we're pulling most of this hay back off of these potatoes and peanuts and far in that we put in the ground to try to get some uh, direct sunlight in the, in the ground and warm things up so we can get these potatoes to sprout out. And then, once we start getting them sprouted out, we'll bring the hay back over it and mulch the ground to hopefully keep the weeds down, except for whatever's going to grow out of this hay, and uh, keep the moisture down close to the ground. We've done this method before and had pretty good luck out of the yield by using old hay and just as the plants grow up, keeping them covered up and giving a space for the, for the potatoes to grow without actually covering them up with dirt. Makes them a lot easier to get out of the ground. We're gonna roll this hay back and uh, hopefully warm this stuff up and get these potatoes sprouting out. Now we've dug up a few of them to make sure that things survived that cold snap that we have and or had, and everything seems to be doing pretty well. We've got you know eyes starting to, to bud out on them, and uh, we're gonna end up by hoping some pretty good potatoes out of them.
so what we're doing here obviously trying to make a garden um about two years ago this area that we've been working in was basically a mixed cedar glade there were you know hardwoods and choke cherries and um, just random crap trees all in here and we came in and cleared them out let it sit fallow for well, about the last two years and then finally this spring since we're moved out here and trying to get a house built went ahead and decided to make this a garden about 50 years ago or so it was a garden uh, they grew you know normal uh, vegetables peanuts corn that kind of stuff here for the my wife's uh, family that lived here and over the intervening years it's just gotten grown up so the soil is depleted you know obviously it's full of roots and rocks and everything else so what we're doing is we're going to take this commercially available uh, black cow composted manure and a bunch of sand that was left over from doing the foundation on my wife's sister's house and mix it into this soil trying to balance out the clay content it's very very clay and if we're going to grow any kind of root vegetables carrots beets you know that kind of stuff it's going to have to be a little more sandy and it needs a lot of nutrient and organic matter put back into it the way the economy is going right now commercial fertilizer is crazy around here it's basically doubled uh, in the last year uh, as well as most of your inputs lime uh, any kind of herbicide that kind of stuff is double or more and all of the people that provide manure based fertilizers are sold out because everybody needs fertilizer and the uh, commercial fertilizer being so expensive they've flipped over to back to using turkey litter cow manure from some of the dairy farms chicken litter that kind of stuff you can't get it so you know the best option for us to get this plot going was to just go to the big box store uh, i think we got this at home depot and just my dog hates birds there's a buzzard sitting in a tree over here but anyway just buy some bags of this to to get some nutrients in the ground we have cattle, but obviously going around the pasture and picking up manure is a pain. And plus we want the nutrients to go back into the pasture. So what we're going to do is lay this out, figure out where we're going to plant what, and then in the blocks where we're going to plant stuff together, we're going to put out this manure and sand. All right, so we're going to be experimenting with the uh, Three sisters planting. We're gonna plant beans, squash, and corn together. We've got five different varieties of corn and they are all heirloom or non-hybrid varieties. So we're gonna plant them in blocks. And so what I'm doing is just putting the uh, composted manure out here. We're gonna come back, till this in, and then start planting. Our prevailing winds are from the west, which is that way. So we're going to put the blocks together so that the prevailing wind should pollinate within type and not give us a hybridized version uh, between different types of heirloom. not going to put sand out up here because the corn is you know pretty good it'll grow in the clay all right and we've had pretty good luck pretty good luck in the past with beans and squash without worrying about adding sand to the soil too much so we're gonna try this and see how this plot works out this year
This is after we put out about 300 pounds of compost on this row and now I'm gonna go back and till that in and then my wife and daughter are gonna start getting it ready to plant. The way we're going to plant this uh, three sisters planting is just hill the soil up and then you know plant the seeds in individual hills and the way my wife's facing toward the camera as we do successive planting we're going to put one row at the top of each bed and then come back later in the season and plant another set of plants so that we can hopefully have a, a continuous harvest once they start producing. And as we're going from left to right down through here is where we're gonna have the different varieties. If you have any questions about what we're doing in this video or any of our videos, please leave a comment down in the comment section because I work pretty hard at trying to answer any questions people have or, or address comments people have on our videos. And if you are enjoying the content and want to support the channel, by all means, uh, hit that like button and subscribe and share with your friends. The, the more people that we can get to like our videos, the more people YouTube shows them to, and it helps us grow this channel. So I just want to tell you thanks for watching. I know that people take time out of their day to come and look at what we're doing during ours, and we really appreciate it that you watch our videos. So thank you. We got five different kinds of corn, beans, squash planted up here. And all of the seed we planted is heirloom seed. So it should breed true and allow us to collect seed from it for future gardens. And then on this end, we planted onion sets and garlic. And we planted red onions, yellow onions, and white onions. And then we've got, these were all sets we got from the feed store. And then we've got seed that we got from Baker Creek that we're growing out right now that'll be transplanted once they're big enough to do so. Here's the area where we mechanically plowed and cleared. And it looks like the hand-sown wheat and oats that we planted are coming up. I'll have to reference the date that we planted it, but you can see a fuzz of green there. This area here, we're going to save for pumpkins watermelon cantaloupe and then up here the oats coming up quite nicely so mechanically cleared and plowed
hand sewn. 